Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will learn how to classify salt solutions as acidic, basic, or pH neutral. Um, in the previous couple of videos, um, prior to this recording, I went over how to classify if an anion is weakly, is a base or pH neutral. In addition, I had another video that helped you to identify if cations would be weakly acidic or pH neutral. But remember that we purchase these ions as salt. So it's important that we look at the salt as a whole. Once it's dissolved in water, investigate the cation and then investigate the, I, the anion to see if they're acidic, basic, or pH neutral. And then we'll make a determination at the end um, what the overall salt solution will be either acidic, basic, or pH neutral. I want to go over an example to talk this through with you. So let's say I purchase ammonium fluoride. Well, the ammonium salt is soluble in water, so it'll break up into the ammonium cation and the fluoride anion. So I'm going to just look at the cation first. I see ammonium is the conjugate acid of a weak base. Its conjugate base is ammonia. And we learned in an earlier video that the conjugate acid of a weak base is a weak acid itself. So ammonium would be acidic. Then I look at the anion fluoride, and fluoride is the conjugate base of a weak acid. The weak acid I'm referring to is hydrofluoric acid. And in an earlier video, we learned that the conjugate base of a weak acid is itself a weak base, and therefore this would be basic. So great, the ammonium would be acidic, the fluoride would be basic, but we need to know to what extent, which one will win, right? This doesn't necessarily mean it'll be a neutral solution. They don't always cancel one another out. So when you run into this situation, then you have to compare the Ka of the cation and the Kb of the anion to see which is larger. Now, when you look at the literature constants in the back of the book, you may not find the Ka of ammonium. We'd have to determine it from the Kb of its conjugate base, ammonia. So the Kb of ammonia is equal to 1.76 times 10 to the negative fifth. The Ka of ammonium is equal then, remember that Kw is equal to Ka times Kb. So if we know one, we can figure out the other. Kw is one times 10 to the negative 14th. We're assuming we're at 25 degrees Celsius. And so therefore this is Kw over Kb. So the Ka of ammonium is 5.68 times 10 to the negative 10th. Now we need to know the Kb of fluoride. Once again, you may not find that in the literature constants in the back of your book, um, but you would definitely find the Ka of the hydrofluoric acid, which is equal to 3.5 times 10 to the negative four. And therefore the Kb of fluoride is equal to Kw over Ka and that's 2.85 times 10 to the negative 11. And then all you need to do once again is to compare the Ka of the cation and the Kb of your anion. And we see here that Ka of the ammonium cation is greater than the Kb of the fluoride anion and therefore overall the salt solution of ammonium fluoride is acidic. All right, 
let's work some more examples together here dissecting these salts and determining if the solution would be acidic, basic, or pH neutral, and we'll explain our answer. So with the aluminum nitrate, it would dissolve an aqueous solution into the aluminum three plus cation and into the nitrate anion. Now, nitrate is the conjugate base of a strong acid. That's the nitric acid. And therefore, it will be pH neutral. The conjugate base of a strong acid is pH neutral. We covered that in a previous video. And then, aluminum is a small, highly charged metal cation. We learned that they can ionize water and so therefore it will make the solution acidic. If you have Acidic plus pH neutral, then overall the solution will be acidic. All right, now we have this ethyl ammonium nitrate salt. going to break up into a cation and anion, which is the nitrate. We've already established that nitrate is the conjugate base of a strong acid and therefore it is pH neutral. This compound here you may not be familiar with. It's ethyl ammonium, which is a um, cation, and the conjugate acid of ethylamine, um, which would be NH2 as opposed to NH3. And so remember, anytime you see those nitrogens here, these are ammonia derivatives, um, and so they are weak um, acids or bases. In this case, this is the weak acid form. This is the conjugate acid of a weak base and therefore this would be acidic. Acidic plus pH neutral means that overall this ethyl ammonium nitrate is acidic when we dissolve it in an aqueous solution by itself. Potassium carbonate would dissolve into potassium cations and the carbonate anion. Potassium is one of the group 1A um, cations and it's the counter ion of a strong base, potassium hydroxide. And therefore it is pH neutral. Carbonate is the conjugate base of a weak acid. And we're talking about like carbonic acid or even if we're just talking about one proton transfer, bicarbonate would be technically the conjugate acid of carbonate. And so if it's the conjugate base of a weak acid, it itself is a weak base and therefore would make the solution or contribute to making it basic. So pH neutral plus basic means overall the potassium carbonate solution in water would be basic. Rubidium iodide would dissolve into the rubidium ion cation 
and the iodide anion. Rubidium, just like potassium, is a group 1A cation and it is the counter ion of a strong base, rubidium hydroxide. And therefore would be pH neutral. Iodide is the conjugate base of a strong acid, hydroiodic acid, and therefore it would also be pH neutral, as we've discussed in an earlier video together. pH neutral plus pH neutral means that when you put rubidium iodide in aqueous solution, it ends up being pH neutral. Just like when you put table salt, sodium chloride in water, right? It doesn't change the pH, right? Sodium is a counter ion of a strong base, sodium hydroxide, so it's pH neutral. Chloride is the conjugate base of a strong acid, hydrochloric acid. So once again, that's also pH neutral. So yes, there are salts out there that will just give you pH neutral solutions. Now let's do the last one, this ammonium hypochlorite. I'll work it up here. Ammonium hypochlorite will dissolve into the ammonium cation and the hypochlorite polyatomic anion there. We've already discussed how ammonium is the conjugate acid of ammonia, which is a weak base and therefore would contribute to making the solution acidic. Hypochlorite is the conjugate base of a weak acid, hypochlorous acid, and therefore would contribute to making the solution basic. So when you have both the ions, the cation and the anion, contributing to making changes to the pH, what do we have to do? We need to compare the Ka of the cation versus the Kb of the anion. And on the previous page, we looked at ammonium already, and the Ka was 5.68 times 10 to the negative 10th. The Kb of hypochlorite is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th over the Ka of its conjugate acid, hypochlorous acid, which is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the negative 8th. And so the Kb for hypochlorite is 3.45 times 10 to the negative 7th. And therefore, when we compare the Ka of ammonium versus the Kb of hypochlorite, we see that the Kb of the anion is greater than the Ka of our cation. And therefore, overall, this would be a basic solution. when dissolved in water. All right, so make sure you review over these that you could um, derive the explanations um, based on analyzing the cation and analyzing the anion and then looking at the solution overall. And this wraps up our conversation on acid-based properties of salt solutions. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.